Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is but a dream. Row that boat. Oh, hey, good morning, and that's Uncle Lou here. Yeah, that's right, it's me, Uncle Lou, live for you on YouTube today. Hey. Thanks for watching. Man, I sure do appreciate it also. And to in addition to that as well. And guess what? If this isn't the video everyone's been waiting for, I, I don't know what is. A Minnesota Golden Gophers 2020 schedule preview. Let's go. Hi, Barner. Is it fair? <laughs> Damn, son, where'd you find this? All right, time for the 2020 Minnesota Golden Gophers football schedule preview. Subscribe to this channel if you're not already. I post college football videos almost every single day of the year, and sometimes they're even watchable. Uh, that determination is left up to you, the viewer. Let me know down below, what do you think about Minnesota's 2020 schedule? Now, keep in mind, this is not a prediction video. I do prediction videos later in the offseason. This is purely just taking a look at their schedule for 2020, and we're going to compare it to 2019. You know, it, it, does it look harder uh, or easier? The, you know, compare the non-cons from last year to this year to road games, that kind of thing, and try to just figure out uh, can uh, can Minnesota navigate its way through this schedule 2020? How difficult is it compared to 2019? All right, P.J. Fleck, right, heading into his fourth year, I think, as Minnesota head coach. Yeah, I believe that's right, fourth year. One of the hottest young coaches uh, really in uh, America, even before last season, which we're going to take a look at here in just a minute. I like P.J. Fleck. I like what he's doing there. Minnesota's never going to recruit with the big boys, but – there are a handful of programs like PJ Flex Minnesota that seem to get just the absolute most out of the talent they have available, right? There's a list of schools that sort of fall into that category. Maybe you put Iowa, a team like Iowa, uh, in that category. But anyway, uh, he's a hot coach right now, right? Uh, inherited a pretty bad team, started out rough, won five games his first year, improved that to seven games his second year, and then, of course, they won 11 games last year after the big bowl win in the Outback Bowl against an SEC team, Auburn, right? This is a regular season preview, so if you're wondering what they did in the regular season, five wins, six wins, and then 10 wins in 2019, 10 and two before the bowl game getting to 11 wins. Here's a quick look at the uh, 2019 schedule just for comparative purposes so we know what we're going off of when we look at 2020. But in the non-con, you had South Dakota State, then at Fresno State, and then home against Georgia Southern. So two home games, one away game, all against inferior, lower classification teams. And to be honest, Minnesota struggled big time in all three of those games. And in my opinion, those three games, even though they were all wins, those three games are the main reason why it took so late into the season for people to really start taking Minnesota seriously or really even give them any amount of respect, even when they were 4-0 and 5-0 and 6-0 and, 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 and then 7-0. It really didn't come till really late in the year, that the, the home game against Penn State that they won, where people really started to take Minnesota seriously. And I think a lot of that has to do with the really slow start that you guys or that Minnesota got off to there with those three inferior teams. But you beat South Dakota State by uh, one touchdown, 28-21. At Fresno State, double overtime win, 38-35. Georgia Southern, which was a bad team last year. You had them at home. Uh, Georgia Southern, in, duh, in South Georgia, had to travel all the way up to Minnesota, play this game, and you barely beat them 35-32. to 32. But then you had a bye week. You sort of regrouped a little. Perfect timing on your bye week there, starting Big Ten play, and you caught fire after that. You won on the road at Purdue. You beat Illinois and Nebraska in back-to-back -back weeks at home. You won at Rutgers. Then you beat Maryland at home. Then you had your second bye week before you started your toughest four-game stretch. And this wasn't even close in terms of tough stretches of games last year for Minnesota. This last four games was by far the most difficult. You start things off at home with a win against Penn State, like I mentioned, signature win. 
uh, for Minnesota last year during the regular season. You were an underdog at home to a hot Penn State team. You held them off 31 to 26. But then the following week, you couldn't rebound. Those back-to-back games uh, bit you there against two quality opponents, and you lose on the road to a decent Iowa team, 23 to 19. You then go on the road and beat a bad Northwestern team, and then you lost uh, your last game of the season at home to Wisconsin in a game that really wasn't that competitive, beats 38 to 17. 10 and 2 regular season there uh, for Minnesota. The non con schedule was very easy. You struggled, but you went 3 and 0. The road schedule at Purdue, not that difficult. At Rutgers, probably the easiest game you can play in the Big Ten. At Iowa, one of the most difficult places to play in the Big Ten. At Northwestern, one of the worst teams in the Big Ten last year. So you had a very easy road schedule last year. Tough slate of games that last four Penn State. And then at home, and then back-to-back road games against Iowa and Northwestern, and then you finish things up at home with Wisconsin. You went two and two in that tough four-game stretch there. All right, so now let's take a look at 2020. Does it look? Uh, is, is it going to be a harder schedule? Is it an easier schedule? What about the road games? Here it is. Uh, let's take a look at it right now. You start things off on a Thursday night, same as you did last year, by the way, against South Dakota State. You started off at home on a Thursday night against South Dakota State and struggled, getting a win, 28 to 21. Same thing this year, start off Thursday night at home against, this time, Florida Atlantic. Then you host Tennessee Tech. You should handle them, but you should have handled South Dakota State, Fresno State, and Georgia Southern. Third game, Iowa. That's a home game and your first conference game, a revenge game from last year. You lost on the road to them last year. You get them at home and your place to kick off your Big Ten slate this year in week three. And then you play your final non-con game of the year at home against uh, to Fred Flintstones of college football, BYU. Uncle Lou will be a huge Minnesota fan that weekend. No doubt. Don't get me started uh, on BYU. We'll be here all day. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Type about it. Uh, yeah. BYU. Okay. So then you got two road games here at Maryland and at Wisconsin. Maryland was terrible last year. What are they going to be this year? I don't know. Wisconsin loses, of course, Jonathan Taylor, but you got to play them there. That's one, a difficult place to play to jump around thing uh, there at Wisconsin. Home against Michigan, another back-to-back road games at Illinois, at Michigan State. Illinois, not a very good team, although they did pull a few upsets last year. Michigan State, brand new coaching staff, which playing both on the road. You got a home game against Purdue. Purdue is one of those teams, you know, kind of like Indiana, like every ACC team, not named Clemson. You know, they're a six-win team. Now, sometimes they win seven or eight games because they're playing a bunch of other six-win teams. But they're not very good, but they tend to win a game or two, maybe that you don't see coming. Uh, you know, so uh, you got them at home, Purdue, and then you have your bye week. Very late in the year for a bye week here, week 11. And then after the bye week, you wrap things up with your last two conference games of the season at home against Northwestern, looking to rebound. I like their coach, too. I think last year, I don't think Northwestern's going to be as bad this year as they were last year. I think that was an anomaly. Get them at home. And then uh, what could be a really big game on the road at Nebraska. Uh, this could be this could be a good game. Uh, Nebraska, of course, still looking to poke their head out of the hole. How long have they been down there? 20 years or so. Scott Frost will be his third year there. Adrian Martinez, a junior. Disappointing year for them last year. But you finished things up on the road in Lincoln against uh, a hard-to-figure-out Nebraska team. So that's the schedule. So when you look at the non-con, Florida Atlantic, Tennessee Tech, and BYU – I would say overall, that's an upgrade versus last year's schedule. Now, you get all three of those teams at home. That's a benefit, but BYU is better than any team you played in the non-con last year. Now, last year, you had to travel for one of your non-con games to Fresno State. This year, they're all three at home. Florida Atlantic, Thursday night games, kick off the season. Tennessee Tech, if you don't beat them, you really got issues. And then, like I mentioned, the home game against BYU, that's your non-con schedule. I'm going to say it's a little bit more difficult, even though all three are at home, just because you have the BYU. And they're a step up from anybody you played in the non-con last year, even though uh, they're a sorry excuse for an institution. Uh, Your road schedule, much more difficult this year, in my opinion, than what you had last year. Just as a reminder, you played at Purdue, at Rutgers, at Northwestern, three of the worst teams in the Big Ten, and you also played at Iowa. That is a tough place to play. Your Big Ten road schedule this year at Maryland, at Wisconsin, at Illinois, at Michigan State, and at Nebraska. So five Big Ten road games. Last year, you only had four Big Ten road games. This year, you have five, and you play in some much more difficult places 
this year versus last year. Iowa was difficult, but the other three were, like I mentioned, three of the really bad teams in the Big Ten this year. You got to go to Nebraska, to Michigan State, to Wisconsin. Tough places to play. Going to be hard to go undefeated in all of those road games. Toughest stretch of games. Well, you, you know, uh, Wisconsin, Michigan, Illinois, and then at Michigan State. That's a pretty tough stretch of games there. If you want to go all the way back to the BYU game, BYU at Maryland, at Wisconsin, Michigan, at Illinois, at Michigan State. That's a pretty tough uh, stretch of games. They are not the toughest I've seen in doing these schedule previews, but uh, tougher than most, I think. Uh, so anyway, that's it. That's the 2020 schedule for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. Were they a flash in the pan? Again, this isn't a, pre a prediction video. I'm not talking about rosters or who they lost or any of that or how many of these games they might win or lose. If you guys want to take a stab at that in the comments section, uh, be my guest. Like I mentioned, I'll be doing a bunch more uh, videos later in the year that are actual prediction videos where I try to figure out a team's record and talk about players and who they lost and who they recruited and yada, 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 so forth and so on. This, that, and the other. That ain't this video. So anyway, that's the schedule. Let me know what you think. Appreciate you guys watching. Have a good morning.